All right, everyone. We have been talking about recombinant DNA technology, and we have discussed about the genomic DNA library and the construction of genomic DNA library. Now it's time to talk about the cDNA library. What is cDNA library? What is the difference between genomic DNA library and cDNA library, and why we are constructing cDNA library? cDNA. First of all, understand this term cDNA. Okay, what is cDNA in the very first place? See, this is DNA. DNA is double stranded. Okay, and DNA can be single stranded as well. Once DNA is denatured, it can be single stranded, right? Single stranded DNA. RNA is completely different, which carries ribonuclease, not the deoxyribonuclease here. So this is RNA. Okay, it carries G A U C. DNA has G A T C. Okay, as a basis. So the RNA. Now we know that the DNA can make RNA. DNA can make RNA via what? Transcription. Sorry. Transcription. This is the method of converting DNA into RNA. Not single-stranded DNA. Actually, double-stranded DNA will make RNA. That is known as transcription. Now, can we go from RNA to DNA? Is it possible? The answer is yes, possible. and that is known as reverse transcription reverse transcription when we are making dna from rna so dna is double stranded we are making double stranded dna from single stranded rna that is known as reverse transcription okay so in reverse transcription we use an enzyme known as reverse transcriptase okay reverse transcriptase enzyme that utilize a single stranded rna as a template to make a double stranded dna how it does that uses the single stranded rna as a template first it will make dna single stranded dna here this is known as single stranded dna or also known as complementary dna this is the cdna or complementary dna the very first strand of the dna which is synthesized utilizing rna as a template using reverse transcriptase as an enzyme will be known as complementary dna or cdna so this single stranded dna is complementary dna or cdna okay now they use the single stranded dna or complementary dna as a template and will make another strand of the dna and then it will become what normal double stranded dna this is a reverse transcription process okay the next step they don't need any reverse transcriptase because they will be using dna strand as a template to make another dna strand so cdna library what do we mean by the cdna library try to understand eukaryotes eukaryotic genome if you look at eukaryotic genome it is composed of two type of sequences one coding region and this is these are say coding regions the highlighted regions are coding and another one is a non coding non coding region and in eukaryotic genome the non coding regions are present in higher amount let's say these sections are coding region coding region coding region like that okay very low number of very less number of coding regions mostly made up with non coding region so if this is mo mostly made up with non coding region mostly made up in non coding region then this non coding region are also known as introns it is known as introns the coding regions are known as exons introns and exons so exons are coding introns are non coding so now we know what we need to do basically if we construct genomic dna library that will be composed of every single dna from coding region from non coding region but actually in reality we sometimes need to deal with only the region of the dna which is coding which codes for protein those are of more importance because ultimately what we study in molecular biology the central dogma that is dna to rna rna to protein so coding region is something that we are more interested in more related to so if you want to clone if you want to make a library of only the coding region from the eukaryotic genome then we need to construct a library known as cdna library so cdna library what is cdna library a complementary dna library again the composite or repository you can say repository of all the coding region coding region genes 
of eukaryotes are known as cdna library so what we do in using cdna library here is that we isolate mrna okay isolation of mrna is done after isolation of mrna what we do reverse transcriptase activity by reverse transcriptase enzyme reverse transcription is done and what it does cdna will be formed single stranded dna that we discussed single stranded dna is formed start with rna here we make single stranded dna then the cdna amplification is done utilizing one strand of the dna will make a second strand of the dna so now double stranded dna is formed here then we do the cloning of this dsdn inside a vector then what we do we transfer the recombinant vector to the host transfer it to the host and that's how the cdna library is created very simple stages okay so the process of genomic library create the process of library creation is the same that you have target dna which is big will fragmentize it into smaller fragments and then we use a vector we cut the vector using the same restriction into nucleus and then we add uh, the target dna to the vector make a recombinant dna and then we transfer the recombinant dna or recombinant vector inside the host cell and we now allow the host cell to grow and maintain the host cell as a culture okay that's what we do so this is another uh, picture showing the whole process again you can see uh, let me take a different color this time so we have this mrna with poly a tail poly a, poly a tail and we attach multiple t or oligo dt primer to begin with and then we extend this primer so basically when we extend this primer we are utilizing this rna as a template to make single stranded dna and this single stranded dna is also known as here complementary dna once that is made what we do removal of rna with alkali we use alkali treatment so rna will be removed from the dna dna rna hybrid can be easily separated with alkali treatment remember that you can write it down very important for csi net examination so once we separate the dna rna hybrid the dna is now separated what we do this is a single stranded c dna that we have now we attach so oligo dt oligo g poly g is added to the end so that now in the next round we can start with poly c or oligo dc and we can extend the oligo dc it will make a double stranded dna double stranded dna is created so now we have at the end we can see the at in this right hand side and gc in the left hand side basically this dc uh, this cg and at at both these ends they will protect their protect the dna from uh, by methylation so they will protect it for you know damage and also methylation is done for one of the strands that the earlier strand or the new so newly synthesized strand is methylated here the moment we methylate newly synthesized dna strand here that will be protected for dna damage uh, uh, for the dna damage because of the marking with methylation that is done so once this is done this is known a double stranded cdna so double stranded complementary dna is made now this is totally dna total dna component now this is the target dna remember this is the target dna now why do you need to go through all this process you can ask a question why we are going through all this process the reason is that because in eukaryotes what rna we produce the dna in eukaryote carries coding region plus non coding region remember that so there is no way to separate the coding region from non coding region while making the genomic dna library so what we do instead is that the dna makes rna basically dna makes mrna the mrna that they make at the beginning which is a premature mrna premature mrna the premature mrna it carries introns and exons in it and then maturation is done maturation means basically here what splicing mrna splicing is done so only exons are added exons and introns are out introns or non coding elements are out so now we have only exons so the length of the mrna gets shorter and the information it carries are of only coding region that is why instead of using the dna for cdn librication we use the rna here because this is remember this is mrna carrying only exon or only coding region sequence so we use that rna we use that rna only and we will have a process of converting that rna into 
double stranded dna via the process of reverse transcription that's why we call it reverse transcription process enabled process reverse transcription utilizing the enzyme reverse transcriptase so once we make the target dna so now this target dna that we made it carries everything every information regarding the coding region of the dna a coding region only so now uh, we can directly clone it using a vector or we can attach a adapter sequence in both the terminal site because sometimes the adapter sequence is important to generate a sticky end in order to clone it using a vector because sometimes you know if you use it as a restriction endonuclease restriction endonuclease treatment can either generate a sticky end or can generate a blunt end a blunt end means basically this kind of end blunt end means there is no nothing sticking out and sticky end means something is sticking out something is sticking out means some of the portion of the dna is single stranded in both the terminal side that's known as sticky end so if the enzyme that we use to cut the target dna the enzyme that we use to cut the vector are producing blunt end then we can directly use this blunt ended dna for cloning if the vector that we generated using restriction endonuclease treatment has a sticky end then we need to also convert this blunt end into sticky end and the best way to do that is add an adapter sequence or known as eco r1 linker here in both the sites and then we generate a sticky end using the eco r1 linker so that now that linker attached to the target dna is capable to be added or capable to be cloned into or inside the vector which is also cleaved by eco r1 restriction endonuclease and now the target dna with the sticky end can be tagged or can be combined with the eco r1 cleaved uh, fragment of the vector and the process of cloning can continue so after that recombinant dna is made the cloning will be done and after recombinant dna is made the recombinant dna will be transferred into the host cell that is e coli and then we allow the e coli cells to grow and divide that's how the simple process is that's how easy the process of the library creation is now remember the cdna library differs from the genomic dna library in terms of the amount of information it possesses cdna library only possesses information regarding the coding elements of the dna but the genomic dna library contains information regarding every single gene under the genome of the organism that's the big difference between genomic dna library and cdna library okay so that is all regarding the cdna library if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more and more videos like that in future thank you bye